Uh, you see him on Fox Sports. Uh, you see him uh, during the game. You see him everywhere. Now you can see him on this new Fox Sports 1 Fox Football Daily weekday show that's on now on the new uh, Fox Sports Network. Uh, so you go find him. It's on uh, all the different channels around New York. You know where it is, but uh, he joins us now, and that's Mike Pereira. Mike, welcome. How are you? I want so much you get sick of me really uh, fast. You all, I watch you. <laughs> listen, you pop in and out all the games. You know, you're everywhere. All right, listen. I am fine. I am fine. Let's get to the, the Sunday night game. Uh, and clearly the NFL admitted their mistake. What, in your mind, would have been a fair way to rectify that situation? Well, I, I think the, the best of a couple of bad options would have been once that the headlinesman took it upon himself to move the chains, which he shouldn't have done. I think once the referee saw that and maybe the line judge on the other side of the field saw it, I think you got to probably shut down the game and stop the clock and get the situation sorted out. I think Jeff Triplett's statement is right. You hate to stop a running clock inside of two minutes, um, especially when there's a hurry up offense going on. But I think sometimes you have to do, you know, the best of, you know, bad options. Do you wait till after the play is over and then go back and say, you know, it's now fourth down, even though it said first on the box? I think the conclusion of the league is probably right. The minute you see the confusion in that uh, situation of the chains moving, shut it down and get it set up. And the Giants then would have been mad because, you know, Washington would have gotten an extra 45 seconds to talk about their uh, their play situation. But it's probably the best of all evils. All right. Um, if Do you think if Shanahan had put up a bigger fuss, which he really didn't, he could have gotten uh, the, any way he could have gotten that down back or no way? No, no way he gets it back. And, and also they talked about a measurement. That thing was thrown into the mix too. Why didn't you stop it for a measurement? But mechanically, and this has been a mechanic for years and years, inside of two minutes, um, with a running clock, you don't stop for a measurement, period. If it's first going to second or second going to third, the only time you'll stop it for a measurement if it's third going to fourth and the next down is going to be fourth down, then you'll go ahead and stop it for that. But otherwise, the referee is instructed to hustle up, make a decision in his own mind, whether it's short or a first down, make the decision and go without the measurement. Because you are concerned, especially with a team that's out of timeouts, you're concerned about the stoppage of the clock giving them an assessment, in essence, a free timeout. And so that is a concern. Uh, my couple of things that have come up recently, the Tomlin play, and not from the standpoint of his right or wrong, the Tomlin play from the standpoint of the officials. I've seen a couple of plays where they have flagged personnel this year for being on the highway for the, for the officials along the sideline. If he's standing there, isn't that an automatic by the official just going around him? Shouldn't he have thrown a flag for him even standing there? Yeah, he uh, certainly they should have, and there is no excuse for it. But I would go back and say that the only there have been flags thrown this year, right? But only when a collision occurs. So it's only when the official runs into the coach, and so therefore he's deemed to have interfered with his ability to officiate. There hasn't been. I don't think you know in a situation other than you know a coach arguing being out on the field. I don't. I don't think I've ever you know, recollected a situation where an official threw a flag when there was actually no contact with the official. But that being said, with the runner going down the sidelines and then the coach, you know, Mike being having a foot on the field, you got to throw that. And, and, you know, the official closest to the play, I can almost forgive him because he's watching the runner. He's watching the tackler. He's watching for blocks. And, and I could see how all of a sudden, maybe in a flash, he doesn't, it really doesn't resonate in his mind. But for the trail guy who's coming up from behind, who gets a clear look at it, or even maybe somebody in the middle of the field, somebody's got to throw that. And, uh, and, and, and obviously, I just spent a lot of time with some league people today because I'm in Minnesota for Jerry Siemens' funeral, which right. was this morning. And, and uh, there's some unhappy campers there, unhappy campers that the officials did not throw a flag because nothing – Galls the league. They don't like to go in and throw a hundred thousand dollar fine at the guy right. when he's not flagged. I mean, that's 
because the in especially in player situation, one of the players' first argument, if there's no flag thrown and the league right. finds it, well, the officials didn't even think it was a foul. Right. Well, in 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 this case, you know, it's just uh, it's just from the official standpoint, somebody out of the crew, and I would say the same thing with the. Monday night fiasco um, or the Sunday night fiasco with Jeff Triplett and his crew, somebody has got to step up and make the right decision. And in that case, was to throw the flag. Now, that being said, Mike, there's no way they would award a score in that play, even though technically they could. If they thought that Mike Tomlin clearly kept Jones from scoring a touchdown, if they thought that with interference, then they could award a touchdown. But I don't think in real time anybody would have thought that there was a uh, there was enough interference there that the touchdown was uh, was going to be scored without any doubt. Mike, do you give the head coach more leeway along the sideline in terms of his behavior and versus the other personnel where if they don't get back, you're going to throw a quick flag, while if it's the head coach, you're going to try and play a little game with him where you'll dance with him a little bit with his movements? I, I, yeah, I, I would say that behavior, yes. Um, you know, we've you kind of always grew up in officiating. Hey, you know the pressures of the head coach, and all the coaches have them. But you know, it's you, you, you kind of give him a little bit more liberty in terms of you know verbal that right. type of stuff, and you go to him. But how about his movements on the sideline too? But if his he's movements, getting... you don't you don't you don't treat him any differently. Okay. I mean, everybody's treated the same way. And like I say, if there's if there's contact, it's automatic. It doesn't make any difference who it is, even if it's the old Salalosi play with the Jets. Um, you know, there's, but there's, but this situation was so blatant that it should have been called.